This recording will go over medications used to treat diarrhea. Diarrhea, frequent liquid stool, is a symptom of an intestinal disorder. Your um, slide here gives you a list of many different causes of diarrhea. Diarrhea can be mild to severe. Antidiarrheals should not be used for more than two days and should not be used if fever is present. Because intestinal fluids are rich in water, sodium, potassium, bicarb, and bicarb, diarrhea can cause minor or severe dehydration and electrolyte imbalances. So with our patient with diarrhea, what we're worried about is dehydration, electrolyte imbalances, acid-base imbalances because of the loss of the, of the bicarb. Diarrhea can develop quickly and can be life-threatening to very young and very old patients who may not be able to compensate for the fluid and electrolyte losses. The cause of diarrhea should be identified. Non-pharmacologic treatment for diarrhea is recommended until the underlying cause can be determined. This includes the use of clear liquids and oral solutions such as Gatorade and Pedialyte and IV electrolyte solutions. Antidiarrheal drugs are frequently used in combination with non-pharmacological -pharma treatment. Traveler's diarrhea is usually caused by E. coli. It ordinarily lasts less than two days. However, it can sometimes become severe. Fluoroquinolone antibiotics are usually prescribed. Loperamide may be used to slow peristalsis and decrease the frequency of defecation, but it can also slow the exit of the organism from the GI tract. So basically, if we give the patient a medication that's slowing down the diarrhea, slowing down peristalsis, we're allowing that offending organism to stay in the GI tract longer, potentially causing more problems. Traveler's diarrhea can be reduced by drinking bottled water, washing fruit, and eating cooked vegetables. Meats should be cooked until well done. There are various antidiarrheals for treating diarrhea and decreasing hypermotility or the increased peristalsis. So different um, ways to decrease peristalsis to help control diarrhea. Usually an underlying cause of diarrhea needs to be correct, corrected as well. Antidiarrheas are classified as opiates and opiate related agents, somatostatin analogs, absorbents, and miscellaneous antidiarrheals. Opiates decrease intestinal motility, thereby decreasing peristalsis. So we've talked about opiates, opiates in, previously in regards to pain control. And you should already know that one of the side effects when you're given an opiate is constipation, right? So they do slow down peristalsis. That can be beneficial for the patient who doesn't have pain, but we're trying to treat diarrhea, right? That property of the opiate could be beneficial for that patient. Opiates are frequently combined with other antidiarrheal agents. Opium antidiarrheals can cause CNS depression. So again, think of your opiates, morphine, things of like that, and how they would affect the CNS, right? Same thing can cause CNS depression uh, when taken with alcohol, sedatives, or tranquilizers. Diphenoxylate with atropine. So diphenoxylate is the opioid agent that we're talking about in regards to this antidiarrheal drug. Atropine, you already know, right? What classification is atropine? Hopefully, you know, hopefully you're saying anticholinergics, right? So you have opioid diphenoxylate in combination with anticholinergic atropine. Um, so this medication is an opiate that is less that has less potential for causing drug dependency than other opiates, such as codeine. So we know how the opioid diphenoxylate works, right? It slows down the GI motility. So why would atropine be added with it, right? Well, think of what it is as an anticholinergic. So how does that affect the GI system, right? When you think anticholinergic, you see the, the body's reaction to fight or flight. Those non-essential things are getting turned down, like the GI system, right? So that um, atropine would cause the, the motility to also decrease. Um, it is added to the diphenoxylate to help decrease abdominal cramping, abdominal cramping, decrease intestinal motility, and hypersecretion. Loperamide is structurally related to diphenoxylate but causes less CNS depression than diphenoxylate. It can be purchased as an over-the-counter drug. So loperamide, uh, the brand name for that is Imodium, but again, we have to memorize these generic names. So it's an opioid-related agent, and what it does is um, it's an opioid receptor agonist, right? So, But it doesn't affect the CNS system, so we don't see those CNS sort of signs and symptoms that you would see with other opioids. Um, 
loperamide uh, protects against diarrhea, reduces fecal volume, and decreases intestinal fluid and electrolyte loss. So I'm guessing most of you guys are familiar with Imodium, right? Generic name, loperamide. Going back to the diphenoxylate, patients with severe hepatic, what's hepatic mean liver impairment, should not take products that contain diphenoxylate. Children and older adults who take diphenoxylate are more susceptible to respiratory depression than our other age groups. Diphenoxylate with atropine is an opium agonist with anticholinergic properties because of the atropine that decreases GI motility. Many side effects are caused by the anticholinergic atropine. So if you need to do a refresher of side effects of atropine, atropine please do, do so. Patients with severe glaucoma should not take another antidiarrheal that does, I'm sorry, patients with, with gla, severe glaucoma should take a different antidiarrheal that does not have the anticholinergic effects. Remember the two big, big things about anticholinergics that you need to remember are one, drying, and two, no glaucoma. This one gets into the effects of, um, you know, slowing down the GI uh, tract, so the risk for constipation also. But um, it's a big no-no with patients with glaucoma, so those patients would need a different type of anti-diarrheal drug. And again, if um, diphenoxylate is taken with alcohol, narcotics, or other sedative hypnotics, CNS depression can occur. Another classification is absorbance. How do absorbance work? They act by coating the wall of the GI tract and absorbing bacteria or toxins that cause diarrhea. Absorbent, um, the absorbent anti-diarrhea that you need to be familiar with is bismuth subsalicylate. The brand name for bismuth subsalicylate is Pepto-Bismol, so you can have an idea of what we're talking about. So bismuth subsalicylate is considered an absorbent because it absorbs bacterial toxins. It's an over-the-counter drug commonly used to treat traveler's diarrhea, and it can also be used as an antacid for GI or for gastric discomfort. And just know there's other miscellaneous antidiarrheals out there that are used to treat diarrhea. Um, I'm not worried about you being able to identify the different types uh, for testing purposes. Please review the purple nursing process box for anti-diarrheals on your own.